Hey everybody, David Chang here with The Art of Thinking Smart, where we learn to live and make smarter decisions. Now, today's guest, I'm very excited, is Roger Epstein. He's the international business consultant and he's been an attorney for 30 years. And I know what you may be thinking, all right, so what does an attorney have to do with thinking smart, right? I'm sure there's a lot of those attorney jokes out there. But I've been very blessed to get to know Roger. And as I have progressed through my career, learn the importance of having, honestly, the best attorneys by your side because they definitely help you make decisions. And I wish I had some good ones like Roger before some of the decisions I had to make early on my business career. And now that he's retired after about 30 years, he's now doing his second job, actually his true love, which is international business consulting. Roger, thank you for coming on the show. Hey, Appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure, it. David. Nice to be here. So let me, tell me a little bit about it. Uh, you know, you're a law professor. What made you get into law? And you did international tax law. That was your primary right, field? Right, right. Well, uh, actually, my mother wanted me to be a lawyer. Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> she worked for the Justice Department. I grew up in Washington, D.C. Oh. And uh, she worked for very high-level lawyers in the, in the U.S. government. Got it. She actually ended up with the number one lawyer, the Solicitor General. She was his wow. assistant by the time she retired. Wow. And so then when I was in college, uh, I took a class in business law, and I thought, oh, I like this. Okay. And so that's what I ended up doing. I... I like most people in college, didn't know what I was doing. And I fumbled around, ended up with a degree in accounting. Okay. I went to work for the Internal Revenue Service in 1967. Oh, the IRS. Okay. The IRS. Right. <laughs> and after I worked there a year, I realized I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Okay. So I applied for law school, and I got into law school at Georgetown Law School. I was okay. very happy. Right, and what I did was I went to, I stayed, I continued to work for the IRS. Okay. And then I went to law school at night. So right, I, I, smart. I started at 8 in the morning, wow. got off at 5, went to school for two or three hours, and studied for two or three hours. Wow. I did that four, four years. Okay. And after my first year or so, I, I had good grades. So I was on the law review, which was another 20 hours a week. Wow, okay. But I had totally fooled around in college. <laughs> so this was a chance to learn about discipline. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and then after I, uh, while I was, uh, I started out as a revenue agent uh, with the IRS, and I met a guy who was a senior partner in a very large law firm in D.C. I worked okay. with him. And a couple of years later, uh, uh, his, his office came around to interview, and he said, we're not looking for tax lawyers, but we're affiliated with a firm in Honolulu, amongst oh. others. And he said, would you be interested if I send him your resume and give you a recommendation? Oh. This is 1971. Okay, I got said, it. I said, where is Honolulu? <laughs> yeah, that's anyway, I decided to come out for a couple of years and uh, see how it went. And been here ever since, huh? And I've been here since 1972. That's awesome. And then you were with Cage. You recently retired from Cage. Shari? I recently retired. I came out and joined Cage in 72, so I was okay. actually there 44 years. Wow. Wow, and Cades is one of the largest law firms. We're the largest law firm in the in the in the state. In the state, and uh, uh, we had very large clients in those days, local clients. But we also had a a, a number of uh, very large uh, uh, clients from Hong Kong too. Oh, okay. Actually, Jardine Matheson acquired the old Theo Davies company. The ah, Theo Davies building still here it. now. Yeah, right. And that was in 1973. Okay. And then uh, Run Run Shaw, who created the Kung Fu movies, the Shaw Brothers. Oh, okay, all right, okay. They started buying real estate in Hawaii, and oh. we began to represent them. And then I had a small client that was sending charters to Hong Kong. Okay. And they wanted me to set up a company there so they wouldn't have to pay any tax on the ah. money they made when the tourists got to Hong Kong. Okay, smart. Okay, so that's where the international tax attorney stuff comes That's where play. it started. That's I came started. in 72, really started in 73. I did a lot of planning for Jardines on how to make huge investments into the United States. Sure. And the Shaw family... Uh, was buying a lot of real estate here, okay, and we planned all that out too. Uh, and then I had a couple of other clients in Hong Kong. But uh, one good story: I was so I'm 28, 28 years old. All I right. go to Hong Kong for. I grew up in a little Jewish neighborhood in Washington <laughs> D.C. Right now I'm going to Hong Kong. So right. the, the tourist guys had a had a suite, a two bedroom suite in the penthouse of the Hyatt Hotel. Wow. So I went there, I told the Shaw people I was going to be there. So Run Run Shaw was 70 then, okay. a knight of the British order. Mm. And they said, where are you going to meet him? I said, I don't know. They said, well, why don't you meet him here? So here, 
their 28-year-old U.S. tax lawyer yeah. entertains them in his two-bedroom suite in the wow. penthouse of the Hyatt Hotel. <laughs> Run Run Shaw, his CEO and CFO. Wow. So that's the kind of how it's been. Okay, got and it. I met with all the senior people in Jardines, which at that time were the largest employers in the world. They had 250,000 really? employees. Really? What was their in what industry were they in? Well, they were in many industries, the hotel business, the okay. land business. They were in charge of the waterfront in Hong Kong. They ran oh, the waterfront. Oh, uh, they owned the Mandarin Hotel chain. Uh, 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 they got in the food business. Davies got the Pizza Hut and Taco Bell franchises later okay, on. And right, so they, right. they had uh, uh, that business. They were in the insurance brokerage. But it was a big conglomerate. Got it. If you ever saw the movie, have you ever read the books Taipan or Noble House? No, I've heard of it. James no. Clavell. Okay. That's the company. Ah, I see. Okay, got it. So you've started off you know, working in the IRS. Then you have all this experience in the law firm and international, not just uh, in, in the local area. And so we're talking about how to make better decisions in life and how your experiences relate and how our audience can use that for, you know, when they're, you know, moving forward. So you have five points that you want to talk about. So let's start with the first one. Okay. So what is the first thing that you, you've learned in, through your years of, of experience? And I'm sure you've had so many clients that you've had to protect or had to, you know, people like me who made mistakes that you got to get us out of jams. So what is the first thing that we can do to make better decisions in life? Well, let me, let me put it to you this way, David. Uh, uh, and this has come to me over the 50 years I've been in business. Mm. Uh, but I've been able to to articulate a little better and, and, and get my arms around a little better from things I've learned later on in life. Got it. So the first principle uh, is, is attitude. Okay. Your attitude is everything. Okay. We all have good and bad that happens in our life, mm. but your attitude is what's really important, how you deal with it. Mm. Now I learned this from a wonderful mentor of mine uh, about 20 years ago, a name, man named Jerry Jampolsky. Okay. He has a whole program called Attitudinal Healing. Okay. And in fact, Jerry was named by Oprah Winfrey as the most important person she ever interviewed. Really? About two years ago. Jerry, okay. Jerry I, I, Jampolsky. I'm going to look this up. And so uh, uh, that's the basic concept that, that your attitude is, is what matters. Doesn't matter what happens to you, it's your attitude and that you can control your attitude. Mm. So it's like that saying that you can't control what happens to you, but you can control your response to what exactly, happens to you. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So that's the first principle. Now, the second principle is consistent with uh, uh, not only Jan Polsky, but kind of uh, 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 every other tradition that, that uh, is in life. The way he frames it is, the essence of our being is love. Okay. But many people would say, we're all connected to some universal energy. Okay. So that's what the religions say. Uh, I, 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 I've done a lot of work for the Joseph Campbell Foundation. In fact, okay. I'm a director. I don't know if you know Joseph Campbell's work. He got very famous in, the, in a book, uh, in an interview with Bill Moyers, just like we're at. Okay, got it. Got called it. The Power of Myth. Okay. And, and he talks about every tradition and every religion, every culture, uh, having similarities. And he okay. looked at thousands of them during his career. He okay. was a professor uh, at Sarah Lawrence College. Anyway, uh, uh, the idea that we're all connected to some universal energy. Okay. So this is a principle that, that now uh, uh, we know from, from physics. Mm, mm. Quantum physics tells us we're all just energy. Sure, right, right, right. Okay, <clears throat> so it's that energy that the mystics, the ancients, have been talking about for years. We're all so I believe that's real. Okay. I believe it from quantum physics. Okay. I believe it from studying many, many religions mm -hmm. and practicing many religions. Okay. And and from the work that Campbell did and many other and my own intuition tells me that our energies going back and forth, we're connected to each other. Got it. So we, we so going back to the first point about attitude is that okay, make smarter decisions. We don't get wrapped up in what happens around us. Don't let the tune out the short-term noise. Just be uh, uh, able to control how we respond to things. So that's one of the, the, the first point of making smart decisions. The second one, so I'm trying to uh, yes, uh, understand yes, it, is yes. that you believe we have all, we're all connected through this universal energy. And how does that help us make smart decisions? Because the that? energy 
comes to you. It's something you've attracted to you okay. or something you need in your life. Mm. And so everything is kind of working in order. Okay. So you can accept the fact that whatever happened to you came for a reason. Oh, okay, okay, got it. And so instead of, like you said, being thrown off, mm. you just accept this is in my life. This is what's happening right now. Got it. How do I deal with it? Got it. So, like in in, in Christianity, uh, you know, so I, that's my faith. It, it's it's that faith that God's in control. That he, uh, um, uh, we believe that uh, what happens to us, we accept that we just continue to move forward. You know, the Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, uh, Islam. So you're saying all of that. Is that's that exactly belief? what I'm saying. Got you it. see, every one of those traditions mm -hmm. is saying. And don't get attached to it. Mm -hmm. Just be present with it. Mm, interesting. When a, when a client comes into my office, I'm not thinking about, oh, I hope he thinks I'm a good lawyer. I'm not thinking about how much money I'm going to make. Right, right. I am present with whatever he tells me. Ah, okay, so when it comes to the problems that we deal with or situations, don't worry about the future or what happened in the past. Be in the present to, with that right attitude when you're dealing with that problem. Exactly. Okay. And how you get into the attitudes and other points and two. But, sure. but that's the idea. Okay. Now there's a book by Eckhart Tolle called The Power of Now. Okay. And what that says is about that. you've never done anything that wasn't right now. I see. And so why aren't you in the present? Got it. That's the place, that's the action point. Interesting. Right now is the only time we can do anything. Okay. The rest is the past and the future. Got it. Got so it. if you can get yourself out of the past and in, out of the future and just be present, now you can deal with it properly. Wow, and this is going to be great. We're going to have to take a short break here, uh, but I'm excited to hear your other three points. Uh, we'll be right back. Hey, thanks so much for joining us at The Art of Thinking Smart. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with Think Tech Hawaii, and I'd like to ask you to come watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha. This is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We would love to hear from you, and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! Hey, welcome back, and we're here with Roger Epstein, who's a well-known attorney, 50 years, uh, international law, now business consulting. We're talking about, through his experiences, the five top things that you need to do to make smarter decisions and we first talked about the attitude the second one uh, the, the energy that he talks about that we're all related and how being in the present and so now uh, let's go to the third point so what's the third point? okay here? the third point is to understand uh, and the way Jan Polsky frames this is uh, if people aren't acting out of love they're acting out of fear mm. his first book was called love is letting go of fear Okay. So I see that in this, in this context. If, if you think about it, we're sitting here acting like we know what the hell we're doing, <laughs> right? But the truth is neither one of us have any idea where we came from, mm. what we're doing here, mm. and where we're going. Mm, mm. That is a setup for neuroses, a setup for anxiety. In fact, the Tibetan Buddhists believe that the purpose of your life is to master neuroses. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, so what, I, what I take as a third principle is yeah. to understand that you're going to be coming from fear all the time. Oh, okay. That this is taking you out of the love that's really your connective energy, the love that okay. brought you into the world, the love that has us always want to be, and my fourth principle is being of service to other people. Okay. This is, how, this is what the connective energy is all about. Got it. So the third one is love, right? Is that, uh, the third uh, one is is that the the opposite of love is fear is fear okay and the fear is what you need to deal with oh i see so you could have the fear of the future okay what's going to happen 
if this thing screws up right now? So the person comes into my office and I'm looking at them. Uh, what happens if I don't know the answer? I look bad. Right, what so happens if I malpractice? Okay. What happens if all these kind of what, sure. what ifs? So, so it's not to make decisions out of fear, but to make the decisions out of love. Exactly. Okay, Very it. well said. So David. that's the third point that's there. That's the third point. Okay. And, and, and to be in the present. Now, uh, uh, to be in the present requires two things. Okay. Forgiveness and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness in the sense of letting go of the resentments you have in the past. Oh. So if I'm still angry at you about right. something that happened five years ago, right, right, right. then I'm holding on to all that anger. You may right. not even know what's going on. I may have forgotten about it. It's something that I this may is, know. I this see. is like taking poison mm. and expecting the other person to die. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. I, I, and, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, people have uh, the, uh, this anger towards others, and I see how it impacts their future life when the other person didn't even know it happened. That's right. And I see a lot of marriages sometimes end up Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. You collect all these right, grievances. Right. And you don't let them go. Right. So it's, like, it's almost like so you're saying not to keep score, and just, just if, if there's anything that's happened, just have to let it go and move on. Let it go. Now, you don't have to not get uh, 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 reconciliation, sure, not reconciliation, course. you don't have to get uh, restored. Right, right, right. Restorative right. justice, sure, you, you can, uh, here's a, a quick story. Sure. This boy has his bicycle stolen. Right. And uh, the next day another boy comes, he says, hey, I stole your bicycle, can you forgive me? Mm. The kid says, okay, I forgive you. And the thief starts walking away and the boy says, hey, where's my bicycle? <laughs> you got to get your bicycle back. Got it, okay. But on the other hand, you don't have to do it with this attitude that takes you out of your love, takes mm. you out of your presence. So even practicing law, and this is very difficult for lawyers. Right. You've got to get your ego out of it. You got to get all the, and that's why it's good to have a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah Because right, right. The, the person who's been harmed, mm. they have trouble getting their right. emotions, emotions out of it. And and I, you know, I work with your firm, and and I totally understand where I'm so close to the situation. I have so much emotions into it. I want to do this, this, and that to this person, but you know, my good attorneys from your firm are saying, calm down. Uh, let's right. look things at a logical perspective, sure. and and what and it's making those decisions out of fear. I, you know, it's all coming together that I want to make this decision because I'm angry, I'm fearful of what's going to happen or not happen, not out of love. And and this is where uh, even though uh, some attorneys always get a bad rap, this is where you uh, at least what I've learned is. Uh, I, I'm able to always, as a, especially as an entrepreneur, I always look for the optimistic, the best case scenario, but the attorneys have done a good job to say, well, let's look at, you know, if things don't go the way they are, we have to uh, set yourself up for success regardless. And I see that. But I want to go back on your bike story. I like this example because uh, Cassius Clay, you know him as Muhammad Ali. I do. And the way he got started boxing, and I don't know if you knew about this, but he had his bike stolen. Uh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. he had his bike stolen, and he said he was gonna beat up the guy who stole his bike. And he st said this to a, a police officer, and the police officer just happened to be a boxing coach. And he saw this guy was out of energy. He really was gonna pound on him, and he said, "You know what? Take out your energy in the boxing gym. I'll I'll just train you a little bit." And he didn't know that that was a start of his career. Instead of beating up on that boy, maybe going to jail, he was able to channel that. And I think that's what you're talking yes. about is channeling yes. our energy, that connection, the attitude into love, not the fear that. Yeah, that into we have. something constructive. So my right. career has not been much. I, I've done a lot of litigation, but it's mostly been negotiations rather than mm. in court. Uh, but I, but I, in transactional work, I, I take the approach of how do we make this work? Mm. I don't care what the other guy did. He did this. You know, people get thrown off on these tangents all the time. Uh, Keep your focus on the result. Got it. And, 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 and just be with it and be present. And let those emotions go through you. Okay. Emotions come up, just right, let them go right. out. Right. They're going to go out eventually anyway. Now, now let's talk about, I, I, especially since, you know, I deal with investments and people are very emotional when the stock market goes up and down. I'm on the phone a lot yeah. and I'm trying to tell them, hey, you know what, we're looking long term, be disciplined, don't let your emotions get in the way because emotions are what drive low returns. How do you, when you see a client that's so emotional, 
Mm. How do you try to steer them or how do you try to help them get that out of their system? Well, uh, a couple of ways. First sure. of all, I try to mirror it. Okay. The calmness, the comfort. Oh. And not in a not in a unconnected way, in right. a connected way. Right. I understand what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Uh. And what are the options? What can we do now? Mm. So I, I kind of go through the alternatives. Uh, I'll give you an example. A guy came into my office at, when I first started practicing law. And he said, uh, here's my facts. And I said, okay, you should have come in six months ago. We could have done this. He said, why don't we backdate everything? Mm, okay, okay. So I said, well, that's not such a good idea because <laughs> if you get caught, you're going to jail. Yeah, and yeah, I am yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Here's some other alternatives. Okay, I see. Here's some other alternatives that are almost as good, and you don't want to go in this direction. I see, I see. So I have the opportunity. Now, you have to read the future. That makes it a little harder. Mm -hmm. But you can say, look, here's what we can sell now. Right. We can get into something else. Right. Or we can hold on. Here's the pattern of this. Right, right. And here's what I think in the long run, but it's your decision. Got it. As a lawyer, it's always the client's decision. That gets me to the fourth point. Okay. The fourth point is to be of service. Okay. Be of service. Now, it, it, as a lawyer, I always tell the clients, there's uh, uh, young lawyers, there are mm -hmm. four constituents. There's the client, there's you, there's your law firm, there's the community. Mm. If the client isn't first, if mm. you're not being of service, then you're not doing your job. Mm -hmm. You can't think how much money am I going to make. You've got to be of service first. This is so critical. And this gets into the second part of... Joseph Campbell's work, okay. what he's found in all these traditions is the two principles are you're connected, we're all connected, and the way to have a good life is to be in service with others. There's nothing more satisfying than being helpful to other people. That's what everybody mm -hmm. wants to do. Of course, nice to make some money, too, sure, and that's sure. part of it. Right. But really, the satisfaction in the, in the higher sense comes from being of service and being helpful Got to other so people. So in the decision-making process, you're saying make the decisions out of love, to not what can I get from this person, but what can I help and add value right, to this person. Right, and isn't that what Jesus said? Right. Uh, giving and receiving are the same. Sure, right. But it's better to give than to receive. Right, the golden rule too. It's, and, it's, and, yeah. and, and, and it's a physical principle. Mm. That's what I'm saying. This plateau that we're set up for, where it's all anxiety, right. when you help other people, you, it takes you out of your own anxiety. Uh. Guy, because your focus is not on yourself, it's your focus is on helping others. Exactly. Very interesting. And this allows you to get rid of the stress, too. Mm. It's stress is such a difficult thing for us. We talk about it all the time. Right. Well, that's the way, that's one of the key principles to be of service. It's very counterintuitive, isn't it? To, to think, because most people think that, okay, I got to fix myself or I got to right. do this. Right. But you're saying, you know what? By helping others, you will fix yourself. Exactly. Uh, and this is what all the great masters have taught. Right. So why aren't we listening? <laughs> because the material world is so powerful. It is. And your emotions are so strong. Right. You do what's count. You shoot yourself in the foot all right. the time. Right. No, absolutely. I've been there before. Of course. Yeah, we've yeah, all yeah. been there. That's why we're here. <laughs> right, right, right. But at 71 years of age, I've figured out some ways right. that that help have helped me in the past. Got it. So to re uh, recapping before you get to the fifth point, we have attitude uh, and, 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 and how you respond to things. The second one is that universal energy being the president now. The third one is coming from a place of love, not fear. The fourth principle is being of service and of value to others. So now what is the last the fifth point? The last principle is to enjoy yourself. Okay. Now, uh, Joseph Campbell had a nice saying that's become very popular, follow your bliss. Okay. Yeah. Follow your bliss means when you don't know which way to go, when you don't know what to do, right. <clears throat> you sit down calmly. Okay. And you get in your heart. Okay. And you see what comes up. Hmm. You can really sit there like this. Meditation. Get sort yourself of. rested. And then ask yourself a question. <clears throat> what do I want to do? Mm. And the answer comes up. Interesting. It comes up all the time, and it comes up for what your heart wants to do. Right, right. And when you go in that direction, should I take this job or that job? Got it. Should I should I cheat over here? <laughs> mm -mm. Ethics is a huge part of this. Mm -mm. It's hard, you know. Forgiveness. The hardest person for all of us to forgive is ourselves. Interesting. I've I've been the host of something called the Hawaii Forgiveness Project and, and for Michael fourteen North is years. Part of that. Michael He's, and I are co-hosts. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so, so that's one of the things we've learned at looking at all these traditions is 
forgiving yourself is the hardest. Why do you think that? Uh, because we're in our heads all the time, and we're constantly judging. Our head is about judging and making decisions, the, discriminating. Mm. But our heart is where our real love is. Got it. And then you make your decision. This is the Hawaiian tradition. Right. You think with your manao. Right. You feel with your pu'uvai, and then you make a decision in your gut. Got it. That's when that word comes up. Uh, and when the word comes up, you think, oh, this feels right. Got it. Now you're following your bliss. That, sen that saying actually has a much deeper meaning in, in the Hindu tradition. Okay. It's one of the three ways to enlightenment. Okay. But it's become more of a pop culture kind of thing to just say, follow what really feels like so where you want to go. Heart, that follow your right. heart. Follow your bliss. Interesting. And that way, you have less recrimination. Mm. And nobody knows what the future is about. Right. That's part of the anxiety. Right, right. And, and, and there's many techniques for all these. We're just scratching the surface right, with these right. five principles. We have to have you on the show again. This is, this is great. <laughs> you go into these in each. There's many techniques for forgiveness. Mm. There's a Stanford Research Forgiveness Project for 25 years. A guy's got a PhD yeah. uh, in forgiveness. Mm. And he's got a whole book on how to do that. Uh, uh, every tradition. To, this happens to be the Jewish uh, high holidays. Mm. The tradition there is on the first day of the new year, which mm. was uh, Tuesday, right. you begin to look back on the last year to see what you did right and what you did wrong. Right. And then uh, on Yom Kippur next Tuesday, right. you sit down and you say, okay, I'm going to really fast to the material world. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink. I'm just going to sit down and Think about the higher, the energy, right. and try to be connected to that, and let go of what happened, and then start over again. That's good. That's a lot of traditions. Uh, this is so great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, and you can go to theartofthinkingsmart.com, and I'll have more stuff posted about Roger, some of the books that he's mentioned, the teachings that he has, and I think we're going to have to have you on the show again just because of all that knowledge that I need to learn as well and also get some free legal advice, right? <laughs> thank you, Roger. Okay, really David, appreciate my it. My great pleasure. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you on our next show. So until then, make sure you think and live smarter. <laughs>